I'm Donald Waters, and welcome to Pocket Cinema, a conversation show about Alan Turing, World War II, and much, much more. Today on the show, we have... I'm Nate Hall, everybody, and we also have today... Tyler Carson. Uh, Ohio Northern University's very own Dr. Russ Crawford. How you doing today? Good. Good. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Okay, uh, so you've had one of his classes, that's correct? Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Uh, do, you, do you like the class? <laughs> yeah. I mean, he's right here, better say you liked it, right? No, yeah, it's it fun. <laughs> I enjoyed it, it was cool. Um, so we only have Dr. Russ, Russ Crawford here for about 30 minutes, so first question that I'm going to ask all of our guests is, what's your favorite movie and why? Well, my favorite movie is probably... Um uh, the Naked Gun. Oh. Because it's funny. <laughs> or anything by Mel Brooks. You know. <laughs> funny movies are good. Mm-hmm. And they don't screw up too much history. <laughs> What's your other... What are some other of your favorite funny movies? Um, Young Frankenstein, Blazing Saddles. Just watched that the other night. Mm. Again. <laughs> Could not be made today. <laughs> no. No, probably not. Um, let's see. What else is... Uh, the Naked Gun and... Um, there was two sequels, uh, Police Squad, The Smell of Fear, some, Naked Gun, The Smell of Fear, something like that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, but all those sequels. <laughs> okay. Uh, sport movies, anything with Kevin Costner is good. Mm. So, Dancing with Wolves? No. No? <laughs> but you just said anything. <laughs> Any sport movie with Kevin Costner. <laughs> True. Dances with Wolves was too long. Oh, uh, I never watched it. <laughs> yeah, it's not, it's a good movie, but it was too long, and I saw it in a, a, a theater without a bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> not good. <laughs> okay, so the main reason we have you here is because Tyler Karsten, for the last episode, recommended the film The Imitation Game. Did you guys like it? Yeah, yeah. it was really yeah. good. Yeah. That's a good movie. Yeah. Okay, so mainly we have you here to analyze the historical accuracy of the film. Well, when I watched it, I didn't see too much that I thought was incorrect about it. But in preparation for tonight, I went back and and looked at Hollywood versus versus history and some other sites, and apparently it was pretty bad. Mm. Uh, (laughs) How so? One site said it was about 42% correct. Oh, Oh, geez. (laughs) They messed up a lot of scenes. Do you know which ones specifically? Well, the biggest thing that I probably should have caught... And since you took, uh, Nate took uh, U.S. since 1877 with me, we talked about Bletchley Park during World War II and the effort to break the German Enigma Code. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if I mentioned in class, but I certainly knew that uh, the Poles had started breaking the Enigma Code and the Enigma machine back in 1932 or so. Right. And so that's something that wasn't mentioned in the movie that that um, Turing had a, a leg up on breaking this code because the Poles had already done most of the groundwork. Okay, yeah. No, at least in this movie, they made it seem nothing like that. They made it seem like Alan Turing did it all from, you know, his own head. Yeah, yeah. And it, it made it seem, apparently he didn't build the machine at Bletchley Park, Um I don't think it ever was at Bletchley Park. It was someplace else. Hmm. It made it seem like he built the machine, and actually it was built by a a manufacturing concern Hmm. who could make a film. Uh, (laughs) Okay. They did get some things right, but um, uh, towards the end of the movie, it made it seem like the police were on to him or looking at him Hmm. because he was possibly a Soviet spy, but that wasn't the case. Um the, the young man he was having an affair with uh, was a, by maybe a prostitute, and he stole some stuff from Turing, and Turing reported it to the police, and they quickly figured out what was going on, and Turing gave a four- or five-page confession, mm, okay. which he probably shouldn't have. So they got that wrong. Okay, yeah. The biggest thing from the historical standpoint, though, is is the help that the the Polish crypto analyst gave to Turing to, to make uh, the Bomba machine. Uh, in the movie, it's named... Christopher. Christopher, Christopher yeah. yeah. Uh, but the actual name was the Bomba. That was okay. what the, the Poles called it before. And so he was just extending their work. Mm. All right, yeah. That's probably the most egregious error because... Mm-hmm. Yeah, 
some of the rest of it's artistic license, but mm-hmm. geez, help, help you know, give the polls a, a nod there. <laughs> um, as a movie, did you like it? Yeah, I liked it. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Another criticism I read about it, which makes sense now, is that they made Turing seem like it basically it was Benedict Cumberbatch mm-hmm. playing yeah. Benedict Cumberbatch. It, <laughs> he could have been Sherlock Holmes, right? Uh, in there, sort of a high functioning sociopath, as he calls himself in the Holmes. <laughs> what is it, Sherlock? Yeah, yeah Sherlock. Yeah, and uh, so. One of the criticisms was that they played him like that, and in real life, he was fairly sociable and oh. got along well with people. Okay. Oh. They they put in some conflict between him and his superiors that didn't really exist. Mm-hmm. They had some scenes of him talking uh, about the Bomba or Enigma in a bar with, um, what was her name? I don't remember, but I'm terrible with names. So yeah, yeah the the woman he uh, was engaged to at one point, Celine or something like that. Might be Susan, something wrong with something. lines. No, uh, and he never would have done that. Mm-hmm. I mean, they were very security conscious. They were mm-hmm. they were so security conscious that um, we didn't find out about this effort to break the codes until the 1970s. Uh, that was the biggest secret of World War II. And so they didn't go, you know, yapping about it in a bar because mm-hmm. eventually that would that secret would have came, come out. And right. it didn't. Mm. Uh, it was the most closely guarded se- Of course, there was a Manhattan Project, but we found out about that on August 6, 1945, when we dropped the bomb on Hiroshima. Mm-hmm. So that was the biggest secret of the war. Okay. Um... Actually, there was something in the movie. It was when he sent out like that crossword puzzle for everybody to solve. There was one thing. It started, I think it was in London. Um, there were air raids happening, and everybody just started going down to tunnels. But like it seemed so normal to them. Was that just something that reoccurred a lot? It did. Okay. Yeah, it was a, sometimes an every night event. <clears throat> Some people have suggested that maybe... That was that was the narrative that the British put out at the time, you know. Mm-hmm. Oh, ho hum! It's the Blitz again. We got to go down to the subway. Okay. Yeah, and so they. What was the um, Queen Elizabeth? Or, no, no, the King at the time. Uh, his motto: "Keep calm and carry on." Oh. Yeah, that was sort of the narrative that they were pushing. Everybody's just going about their life, and you know it's a bother, but we got to go down in the the uh, the underground. Yeah, and so that was true. Okay, to a certain extent, but I'm I'm sure if the bombs landed close, people were pretty pretty scared. Yeah, I'd imagine. Yeah. And apparently, that was another mistake. The Cumber or, uh, Turing had nothing to do with the times puzzle thing oh, okay. uh, the times did have a puzzle contest and uh, the bletchley park people did offer those who did it quickly a chance at a job mm-hmm. okay so that much was true at least right. the british mm-hmm. gh gchq their code breaking people said the only thing that was correct about that movie was that there was world war Two, and that turing's first name was alan Everything else was false. <laughs> so was the uh, whole MI6 thing not true then, or was that something? Investigating Turing? Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was false. Okay. That was all Hollywoodized? That was Hollywoodized. Any questions, Tyler? No. No? Oh, actually, did it pass the sleep test? Yeah. So you watched it? Mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> Do you usually fall asleep? Oh, yeah. It's often for him. Yeah, mm. we call it the sleep test if it doesn't <laughs> fall asleep. What movies you fallen asleep in? <laughs> so many. Tried falling asleep through the Super Mario Bros. movie. Mm. I f- fell asleep to. I know it's the basketball one and then a lot of slam dunks. Slam dunk. What's it was like? a it's a an basketball anime. anime. Oh, anime. Mm. Right. That's just right off the top of my head. There's been a lot <laughs> of other ones. Do you like any anime? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Which Cowboy Bebop was good. Oh, okay. That's cool. okay. Yeah. Inuyasha had some historical elements. They, oh. Was it, mm. uh, was it Inuyasha that had the 
episode about uh, Commodore Perry's sailors coming to Japan and they played a baseball game. Anime is their real house. Maybe. I haven't seen that. <laughs> I, I don't think that was Ino- Inuyasha. That was... That was another one of them. Okay. Yeah. Um, but there was a, a, an episode about Commodore Perry's sailors and the characters playing baseball, which was fascinating. Mm. Uh, have you heard of, of Vagabond, then? It's a famous, like, it's, a, like, about um the great samurai, Masha, Ma... Here, come back to it. I got to bear The one who wrote the book of the Six Rings, Masa Shigi? No, um, I don't think so. The one who wrote the um, Hagakure, um, Yamamoto, Sunetomo? No. Masa Shigi was the... Ah. The one who wrote the Book of the Six Rings, maybe? I think. Um, but the swordsman it's about was Masashi Miyamoto. Miyamoto. Is he real? From what I remember, it's like, it's more fictionalized, but it's about the Japanese swordsman. Um, oh, based Mus- on Musashi, E.G. Yoshikawa's novel. So maybe it's uh, not. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> Musashi Miyamoto, that might have been the name of the... Yeah, maybe. Okay, yeah. Um, anyway. well, so no, I don't know that one. Okay, I mean it's all it's a manga, so it's they never made it into like an actual anime show. Okay, to my knowledge. Uh, I know I Shield Twenty One. Have you heard of that? Mm-mm. It's a Japanese manga with uh, football. American oh, okay. football is its central idea. Mm-hmm. My grandsons are into manga right now, and <laughs> yeah. so they're. They're consuming all this stuff. Which okay. ones are they reading? I don't know. Some French stuff. <laughs> oh. Uh. So is Tintin French? Yes, it is. Well, oh. it's Belgian. Mm. I think it's Belgian. I don't know. Oof, boy. <laughs> Sophie's going to be mad about that one. Yeah. I'm pretty <laughs> sure the, the writer of that was Belgian. Mm. Mm. But they all love it. Mm. The French do. Yeah. Okay. What are Sophie's favorite movies? Papi fait la resistance. Never heard of it. It's a <laughs> comedy about World War Two and mm. the resistance. Okay. Um, Amelie was a good one. Oh yeah. Uh, let's see. There are some comedy movies as well. Uh, OSS SS or something. Some I can't remember the exact title. But uh, quite a few. Anyway. She likes the naked gun, and, and she laughed just as hard as I did at uh, um, Blazing Saddles. Okay. Any other questions? I don't have anything, I don't think. No? Nope. Okay. <laughs> well, see what I tell you. Not even 15 minutes. There we go. Efficiency <laughs> in action. Uh-huh. Anything else you want to say about the imitation game? Oh... Well, you know, it's it's probably one of those movies that has a lot of little things and some of the big things that didn't come out right. But the whole effort to break the Enigma code, as far as movies on that go, it's probably one of the better ones. I mean, U-571, have you ever seen that movie? Mm-hmm. Okay, that was about uh, an effort to capture a U-boat, and they captured two or three Enigma machines that are on the U-boat. Okay. But in the Hollywood telling, they had John Bon Jovi as one of the people that captured the U-boat. It was a British operation. Mm -hmm. So, as far as it goes, that's not bad. Hmm. And if you've seen Midway, uh, they talk about the other half of the equation in World War II, the magic intercepts. That was the code name given to... Uh, our effort to break the Japanese diplomatic and naval codes, which was also successful. So that was a pretty fascinating part of the war that, like I say, we didn't know anything about until 1977, I think, almost, Mm. when somebody wrote a book about that. Mm. So all the movies made prior to 1977, well, were just wrong because they didn't (laughs) (laughs) didn't know everything. Right. So the first Midway movie, well, doggone it, we got lucky and we found the Japanese. So we just had a hunch we were coming. Well, the second movie, 
We knew they were coming because we were reading their radio traffic. Yeah. Okay. Um, I guess, would you say then, the imitation game, do you think it's worth watching for people who are interested in his, like the history of cracking the Enigma code? Yeah. Okay. I think it is. I guess they they were pretty accurate with the machine itself, although that's what it looked like without the the cover. You know, it had a like a matte black finish or so. Oh, okay. Right. An exoskeleton, <laughs> if you will. Yeah. And so that looked okay. But how difficult it was and how important it was to the war effort... You know, some people argue mm-hmm. shorten the war by two to four years. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. That's what the movie said at the end. Yeah. yeah. That's what they said. Uh, who knows? Uh, okay. It's hard to tell looking backwards. Mm. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thanks for joining us. I'm free. <laughs> yeah. Whoa, it's cold out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, never mind. <laughs> You're good. Thank you. Okay, well, that was Dr. Russ Crawford. What did you think about him as a guest? I liked it. I thought he was pretty funny. I thought, yeah, I enjoyed it. Um, he brought a good historical aspect to it, which is what I, I love history, so I always love mm-hmm. learning about this stuff. So it was very nice to see. And that's definitely going to hurt my rating, though. Mm. Now that I know it's yeah. pretty, un, you know, not inaccurate. It's the word. You don't have much to say, Tyler. There wasn't very much to say. I don't think he wanted to talk to, <laughs> to uh, an adult that he didn't know. <laughs> yeah, uh, stranger danger. <laughs> well, you talked to Cole pretty well. Stranger danger. Well, Cole's not a stranger. Cole's like three years older than us, maybe. He's twenty-three. He's three years older. Yeah. So like that's but Ross is. <laughs> what are you trying to say? A uh, very young man, just a little older than... Uh, <laughs> Sorry, I don't have good relations mm. with teachers. Uh, <laughs> yeah, because he would fail you if you went here. So, you didn't take a history class with Russ. Mm. Um, did you Did you ever even take one yet? Well, I'm I taking one now for with Dr. A, but it's more politics. It's not history. What is it? Mass media and politics. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm currently in Western Civilization with your dad. Uh Professor Robert Waters. That's a, that's quite a time. Well, how's your guys' week, dude? It's been pretty good. Bad. Why? Been bad? Why? My truck broken. What? Yeah, that's what your happens Ford when F-150? you run it through the sand dunes. <laughs> huh? That's what happens when you run it through the sand no, dunes. Needs, I got. I gave it new coils, and now it needs new spark plugs. Whenever he tries to fix his truck, it seems to break. <laughs> yeah. Before we went on our trip to NPC, he tried to change something. Crap, shoot sensors. the whole thing. <laughs> the sensors. And I had to so change, that. change it back. And it was fine. It set us back a good, like, three hours. Three hours. <laughs> that was fine. I forgot to mention that I am retooling the show so that we don't talk about a new movie and then a recommended movie. We're just going to talk about the recommended movie, but that also means the episodes are going to be shorter, probably, if we don't have anything else to talk about other than that movie. Mm-hmm. Um, well, The Invitation Game. So, after hearing Dr. Crawford, or take on it, historically-wise, I had it at an 8. Probably going to go six or seven because it's a, it's a really good movie but they definitely from what it sounds like they made it Hollywood which is kind of annoying because obviously they wanted to make it look like Alan Turn and did everything to make turing. it seem like you keep turing. saying turning my bad <laughs> it's turning okay. turing T-U-R-I-N-G yeah so it, they made it look like Alan Turing was such a genius and like he didn't get any help at all with getting the machine and everything, which obviously is not true now that we know. Which is something I could see with Hollywood. He got help with the machine? I don't... He's like... He sent out requests the, to get parts. Yes, but the other people just weren't convinced of the machine yet. And once they were, they helped out. Yeah, but I mean with like the construction of the machine, he didn't build it, which yeah, they made it seem like he did. And also him figuring everything out with cracking the Enigma code, he got help from the polls. Yeah. I I say that they can throw that in, but, like, building the machine definitely would have to be, like, that. 
him building it would make it so much better for the movie than. Mm. Yeah, that's I just why got. They, yeah, I just I got see mission. why they did it. But they could have at least mention slight yes. help from. Mm. So why did you want to watch this movie, Tyler? For the podcast, uh, I saw it on Netflix. <laughs> Is that the only it, reason? It said mathematician. <laughs> uh, <I'm not laughs> that's what you are. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a human calculator. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Um, when Doctor Crawford was here, he talked about how they made uh, Benedict Cumberca- Cumberbatch seem like such like a social outcast and a weird person. And honestly, he reminded me of a even worse Sheldon. <laughs> Sheldon Cooper. <laughs> yeah, even worse Sheldon Cooper. And I just thought it was so funny. But it did make me want to watch Sherlock again. Because, mm. I don't know, I love Benedict Cumberbatch. He's a great actor. To me, at least. Mm-hmm. I agree. What'd you think about the movie, Tyler? Really good. Really good? Uh, probably an eight. What'd you like about it? Everything. <laughs> <laughs> was it better than Multiverse of Madness? <laughs> probably not. <laughs> Why not? Well, Multimers of Madness has that superhero charm. Yeah. <laughs> but Benedict Cumberbatch is uh, not... If you watch well, it... The Multiverse of Madness was definitely more historically accurate, so... <laughs> um, if you watched it as a spinoff of, with Doctor Strange instead... Alan, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, there's her superhero charm. <laughs> just imagine just, just AI just putting Doctor Strange in there well, instead. It's just a multiverse where... Uh, Stephen Strange yeah. is actually Alan Turing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It takes a magician, you know? Oh. Uh, I was speaking of, like, Doctor Strange, Marvel, Fantastic Forecast. Mm. Oh, I haven't seen it. Yeah, Fantastic Forecast Hold got up. released. Yeah, I don't know the names other than Pedro Pascal. Pedro Pascal. That's what I said, you right? You said Pedro. I said, okay, I know it's Pedro. Uh, the Fantastic Forecast. So... Pedro Pascal's playing um, Mr. Fantastic, which I'm not against. I think he's going to do really good with it, because everything I've seen with him, he's great. But he's not who I imagined. And I heard all these rumors flowing around, and I'm like, I just don't think he's exactly the Reed Richards I see. And I don't think John Krasinski should have came back. Krasinski. 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 You get it. <laughs> I don't think Jim should have came back. Um, to play Mr. Fantastic, I think he was cool as a one-off character. And I think he could come back in, like, Secret Wars or something. That will be cool. But we could have saw something else, somebody else. But I think um, Pedro Pascal is going to be great. He always is. And I probably will get used to him. I just kind of hope he doesn't have his famous, like, beard. The, the, like, the Reed Richards I know, and if, I guess it depends on what the movie's about. He's young. Or not young, but, like, he doesn't have any facial hair. Which is kind of what I'd imagine. Um... Vanessa Kirby is playing uh, Sue Storm, which I don't know if I've seen Vanessa Kirby in anything. Guess wait, okay. So she recently starred in um, Napoleon. Mm. Why does that say two? Uh, she might have been. Um, if my data was working, it I could tell you. What? I don't know. <laughs> my phone wasn't loaded. I guess she was in the two latest Mission Impossible movies, too. Mm. Uh, then we got Joseph Quinn, who's playing Johnny Storm, the Human Torch. Um, that's Sue Storm's brother. He's known, I guess, for recently... He took a prominent role in uh, Stranger Things Season 4. Was he who I think he was? She I never was, watched She it. was in the Imitation Game? Who? Vanessa Kirby? Mm-hmm. Really? Who is she? Uh, good question. <laughs> Oh, you played don't. Eddie Munson. Wow. Okay, that's interesting. It all comes in such a small world. Um, and then the lovable thing is being played by Eben Moss uh, Bachrock. Don't know if that's how you say his name. Probably not. Uh, let's see. He was in. He's in the hit drama series from Hulu, The Bear, which is a very popular show. Um, I haven't watched it yet, other than the first episode. But I do want to. It seems really good. Um... Joan. She's in the Punishers too. Joan was the name. Yeah. Mm. yeah. I was like, it's not Susan. I was like, I could tell you if I heard it. Yeah, I didn't think it was Susan, but that was the name in my head. So I just kind of threw something out there. Um, but that's a fantastic forecast. I'm a big nar- Marvel nerd. I've probably said this about every time on the episode. So I'm I'm excited. I'm excited to see the Fantastic Four again. It's got to be better than the like I think 2015. Whenever it was with uh, Michael B. Jordan. Oh, uh, fan four stick. Yeah, fan four <laughs> stick. Yeah, that was 
Something. That was actually probably the first movie I saw and actually hated. Because I like, I tend to love every movie, I've been told. <laughs> Shout out to Jack Armstrong. Me and Jack watched that. I think it was a rainy Saturday morning. <laughs> uh, we were, I forget how old we were, but Jack was insistent that we turn it off. And I said, no, 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 no. we're <laughs> finishing it. And we heard, what are we, some kind of, <laughs> no, that's Suicide Squad. <laughs> I, I don't remember the movie, like, at all. What are we, some kind of Suicide Squad? <laughs> Alan Turing in the invitation game. What are we playing? Some kind of invitation game? <laughs> yeah, I think he actually said something along those lines in the movie. There is a little more to talk about. So one thing I wanted to talk about was um, Alan Turing. Turing was um, they like the, as Russ said, the FBI or MI6 was investigating him, and they found because they thought he was Soviet spy, but it turned out that he was gay. And, um, throughout most of the movie, I feel like it's hard to tell. And, like, the first while, they don't really talk anything about it, and then they start going back to his past, and we see that he develops, like, this friendship with, the, um, I believe the name was Christopher, and I think that's why they named the machine, machine Christopher. And we start to see that those two had feelings for each other. And after the spring break, should we say spoilers at some point? Spoilers! So, after the spring break or whatever it was, um, we come back to find that Christopher passed away, and I can't remember what it was exactly, but that, you know, that was hard on Alan Turing. Um, the thing was, they didn't, I feel like they put it to the sideline, and in like the last, not even half hour maybe, they kind of focused in on it and made it the rest of the movie. Because I felt like they rushed that in. The ending felt weird to me. They kind of rushed... So, like, they cracked the Enigma code. Um, They all went their separate ways. And then Alan Turing eventually confesses to the police. And they would either sentence him to jail or... Hormone... Hormone... Concentration. Yeah, something yeah. like that where it's pretty much scare him straight. No, yes, yes, this is gonna scare him as I inject you with chemicals. I think I, I, think I hit that one on the nail, but I do like how they kind of represented that. At least, like you could see, he was shaking. He was yeah. just a mess, and it, it was like it's terrible to see that. It's, I even then, I don't know how they thought that. What I don't understand the scene where they were like, he was like, "I care for you. Don't be here." After he learns about the, the spies. He's like, he's like, I care for you. Leave. And she's like, I care for you. I know you're gay. We can have a life together. And he's like, yeah, I, I no know longer care for you. I don't. And know she's like, the fuck. <laughs> I don't know if it was just because he was trying to keep her safe no, but, from the FBI. Yeah, yeah, but but she knew that he still cared, for and that he he went from straight up within the span of a minute from, I care for you, please leave, to, mm -hmm. I no longer care for you. Get out of here. <laughs> it might have been him trying to push her away yeah. for the sake of safety. I don't think it was well executed either. Yeah, because it's, it's it's a swap within yeah. 30 seconds. But yeah, I do feel like they put the whole um, thing of Alan Turing being gay, pushed to the side and then rushed it, which it's just, I think that's unfair. And it definitely could have been longer, and I hate to say that because I don't like movies being super long, but this movie probably could have used some more time. Because I really like... <sighs> More historically accurate with more time and right. mm -hmm. more slightly more details. Yeah, because it ran by pretty fast. Mm -hmm. It was really fast paced. Yeah, it was. Well, I didn't understand this. I'm just sitting there like, you know, the messages end in Hail Hitler. That's all you need. <laughs> um, what's interesting about this movie is that for uh, Oscar Best Picture, they can nominate ten movies, and the year that this came out, only nine were nominated, and this wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> the other well, nominees yeah. were La La Land, amazing mm -hmm. movie. Arrival, amazing movie. I Lion, I haven't seen. seen Hell or High Water, haven't I seen. seen. Hidden Figures, it's Shoot. okay. Shoot. Moonlight, incredible, amazing. Hacksaw Ridge, it was okay. Manchester by the Sea, I haven't seen. And Fences, I haven't seen. So, I've only seen like three out of the nine. They definitely could have put Imitation Game in they, there. They put, and especially because there was one slot left. Yeah, I like, they only nominated I, nine. I feel like they, they didn't because they already had a uh, 
Axel Ridge? No, they had the, um, what was the other one? The one was also a mathematician and doing stuff, right? I, that was the, uh... Are you, you're not talking hidden about... Figures? Hidden figures? Hidden oh. figures. Yeah. Okay, I, yeah. I, I only I did, saw... I, I, do, I, I knew what I was talking about. So okay. you're saying it would have been derivative for them? Because it would have been almost... It's another mathematician yeah. history, I see where you're coming at, yeah. Movie that they have in there. Okay, that's fair. But they could have at least found another movie for to fill all ten slots. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I've only seen, I think, La La Land off that list, which probably would have been my movie of the year for that then. Because Hidden Figures is the three... Is the, uh, three the three girls, yeah. We saw yeah, a math class. Yeah. Uh, Seventh grade? Uh, okay, I think I <laughs> He that. probably doesn't remember it at all. I watched I it I wrote down recently. 500 digits of pie during the class. The character development was shoddy, I'd say. Um... But other than that, it's pretty good. And if you can look past the historical inaccuracy that it has and look at it like a Hollywood movie, yeah, it's fun. It's really, it would be a great time. I enjoyed it. And when, before I learned that, I loved it. Now it's more of a, okay, that's kind of annoying. Because I really do enjoy history and I like mm-hmm. accuracy in my history, which is like, I love Society of the Snow. And then it becomes less of a movie, more of a, docu- a docu- documentary. Yeah, they had to strike that perfect balance, which I feel like Society of Snow did. They probably took way more creative liberties than they probably should have. Yeah, I feel like they did. Like, I understand why they made the choices they did, but, again, that's yeah. probably why they weren't nominated for Best Picture. It could have been. If it's that inaccurate, maybe, yeah, it's not surprising. Okay. Is there anything else to talk about? This kind of a short episode, not even an hour. Oh, we'll keep talking. <laughs> about what? Um... Well, the I can second my, arc. Oh yeah, the second no, arc. I, I can do my X Men update. <laughs> oh yeah, your X Men update. So, uh, I believe it was Thursday or Friday night. Anyways, I watched X Men: The Last Stand, which is the Haven't third X Men movie. Which one's that? Third one. Yes. <laughs> but so, what happens? What happens? <laughs> well, I don't want to spoil. I'll put it in is short. It, is it the travel? No, that stays. That future stays the future. Oh. That's a good movie. Which one's that one? <laughs> I haven't seen that one yet. Okay. Oh, which one's that one? So, X-Men The Last Stand. You said you're on the third movie, so which, when does that... I'm so confused. What? <laughs> All right, so it goes X-Men. Yes. X2, X-Men yes. United, X-Men The Last Stand. That's what I said. That you're on That's the third what one. I'm on. Yes. I, well, I just So when's it. the days have passed? That's in the... What they call the, like, beginnings trilogy or something, which oh. includes First Class, Days of Future Past, and Apocalypse. No. Um, anyway. I wasn't sure, so I was asking. Okay, now I get you. <laughs> I was um, like... But The Last Stand is kind of... It's a jumbled... It, it's good, I liked it. But um, it kind of mashes the Dark Phoenix storyline slightly with um, Magneto being badass as usual. Um, so this is the one... No, that's... No. So have you seen X2? Mm-hmm. A long time ago. All right, so you don't mind? I don't remember. Yeah, I just got that super. I just got this movie super confused with the Phoenix movie. So I'm able to oh, say like Dark what Phoenix. happens at the end of X two. Yeah. Okay. So at the end of X two, spoiler. <laughs> at the end of X two, Jean Grey um sacrifices herself, um and like stops this whole f- uh dam from closing in on like the X Men trying to escape. So she passes away. That's this movie starts off pretty like. I think it's like a few months after it maybe um pretty much cyclops is a mess because he was in love with her he's kind of become wolverine and then doesn't he like start seeing her right. yes right. pretty much he starts hearing like uh gene gray call out to her or him and he starts becoming more like the wolverine in this case like i said and eventually he abandons the x-men goes after gene gray um and we see that she's alive again that's all i'll say um, and that spawns kind of Dark Phoenix's storyline, which they didn't really follow. I keep getting it mixed up with Dark Phoenix. Like, <laughs> see, because they made an X-Men Dark I kind Phoenix of movie, I heard. I watched wow. that for their show at one point, because I haven't seen it. I heard it's supposed to be I, I keep going for this movie, and then I keep trying to draw the point past that, and I just keep ending up in Dark Phoenix, because I know it's Dark Phoenix that I'm ending up in. And I'm like, I can't say anything about the movie, because it just ends up in a completely different movie. <laughs> yeah, it is. Like, I don't know why they did it twice. The thing is, this one, and I don't even know if the Dark Phoenix movie, like X-Men Dark Phoenix actually follows the comic because this one didn't really which is fine it was its own take but that was not, I guess the biggest thing because it was also Magneto um, trying to stop the humans from making a cure to cure the X-Men because they found a way to do that that's the big thing and he used Jean Grey Dark Phoenix to his advantage 
Um, but a lot of shit happens. I think it's really good. And overall, the trilogy was great. I think my favorite out of the three would be X2. But this one has some great stuff. And I do have one complaint about the whole trilogy is that... Um, in the comics, and I think in probably the animated show, which I just started watching... Um, well, maybe. But uh, Jean Grey and Cyclops are kind of the lovers. And you kind of see that in that trilogy. But they make... Like, Wolverine almost seem like... Jean Grey's interest, and it's kind of swapping the two. And they also make Wolverine yeah. kind of seem like the leader of the X-Men, when it's really, like... Well, I guess Charles Xavier is a leader, then, like, you know... It's Wolverine. No, it's actually Cyclops. Cyclops is kind of the big no, leader. No, I think... Isn't it Beast, though? <laughs> no. I think... I think I don't think it's Cyclops. <laughs> it's Cyclops. I, don't I swear it to God, it's Cyclops. Not portrayed in the movies. Yeah, not... not <laughs> that's that's what my he's problem. Saying. There like, we go. From what I remember in the comic, Cyclops was more of the leader. He he well, kind of dir- got he has a less interesting, interesting power set for the movies. <laughs> He's got laser eyes. That's it. <laughs> Wolverine's just got. And I love and Wolverine. Regeneration. <laughs> oh no, we got a we got a hero who can't just uh, heal right away. Oh, <laughs> uh, oh no, I my. Jean Grey, he's hold, they're holding Jean Grey in front of him. I can't open my eyes. <laughs> yeah, I'm blind. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I see where you're coming from. I do think Wolverine's cooler. And, and uh, Cyclops causes so much more damage if he's in public, in a public area. I don't know about that. Have you seen Wolverine fight? He's not exactly pretty with it. I. I you seen Cyclops fight in the animated series? He just goes, ding, ding. We should, there should have been Gambit in there, though. Yeah, they, I wonder if he comes in later. I'm not sure, because I, like, I have not watched the X-Men movies. This is my first time going through. Really? Yeah. Um, other than some of Apocalypse, I watched at our friend Andrew's house one sleepover. Um, but yeah, um, not to go in for much more. So I don't spoil anything. X-Men The Last Stand, I really liked, and I'm excited. Tonight, actually, me and my roommate Brendan are going to watch X-Men Origins Wolverine, which I've heard And I was invited? Big. No. Yeah, why you not? Invited. What the hell? <laughs> <laughs> um, I've heard it's not great, but I want to watch it, so I'll see how it is. So I can make my own opinion. But yeah, that's my X-Men update. But speaking of X-Men, during the Super Bowl... And a funny story. The first, I think, about first fucking trailer they showed was Deadpool and Wolverine. I watched the entire Super Bowl, and I am not a football fan, and I missed it. I'm like, why didn't they show the trailer? Because when I, when we started the Super Bowl, we watched the Nickelodeon version to watch SpongeBob and Patrick commentate. Did you go to that Super Bowl party? No, I didn't. So, where, where were you? I was just at my house. Or my... Brendan's or our, 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 my dorm. Sorry, I, I was working. I was working during it, and I would just wasn't I invited. Work. Yeah, because I'm not a football guy. I don't think any of us here are really football guys. Not really. Go Bills. It's fine to watch. <laughs> yeah. If everybody else is watching it during like Thanksgiving, I'm yeah, like, yeah, fine, that's you know? fine. But anyways, I'm not gonna sit down and watch it by myself from the- <laughs> for the game. Whenever the game was actually playing, I turn around my desk and do my homework. Commercials <laughs> glued to the screen. <laughs> There are some funny commercials, I'll say that. Uh, you hear that, uh, it's not Timu, it's Temu? Yeah, I, they play that five times. I could not believe it, because that's, it's like $7 million for 30 seconds, from what I've heard. Yeah. So that ad is probably 30 seconds, at least. They didn't even make a new ad. They used the same ad they already had. And they're like, yep. Like, I don't, how do they have that money? Temu is such a scam, I don't know why people buy from it. But, um... Deadpool and Wolverine. I watched the trailer. Looks amazeballs. Mm-mm. Super. Did you watch the trailer? Mm-mm. I didn't watch it. What, are you both stupid or something? I didn't know there was a trailer for the Super Bowl. <laughs> I hope, I hope, uh, Colossus is in there. Isn't that his name? Or Colossal? Colossus. Colossus. Um, nice I can't remember, actually. Or that one chick. I forget her name. That one chick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that screams? Or, I think? No. That's... You're not talking about, like, Deadpool's love interest, right? No. You're not talking about Domino? Domino. I don't think she's the one that screams. Or just She sound. might be. She might be. The little the girl. That oh, the little classes. girl. I don't oh, know. the girl with glasses? Yeah. Yeah, I'm not. Isn't that's Domino? not Domino. No, Domino's older. She's, I can't remember. 
It's been a minute. I'm going to watch those movies again, too. But anyways, the trailer itself looks uh, great. Uh, are they going to be in there? Did, did they also... Did Marvel also acquire those? Yeah, they acquired all the Fox rights. So they okay. own, like... Oh, okay. I didn't, know they, I didn't know if they Is they going to be in the MCU? Simple. Yeah, so pretty yeah. much what happens um, is the TVA oh, shows up yeah. in it, which is from Loki. Um, so it's really hitting the multiverse, and now we're going to start... <laughs> and I guess... Spoilers for the Deadpool and Wolverine trailer. <laughs> Um, I can't hear this, dude. <laughs> Deadpool calls himself uh, like the the uh, MCU Jesus because <laughs> he's gonna come in and save the MCU. Please, Deadpool, save the MCU. <laughs> we are not in a great state right now. Oh, so it's like the breaking the fourth wall, like the last time. Yes, um, last one? but actually, in this trailer, we don't see any of Wolverine until the end, where Deadpool's like lying on the ground or whatever because he got blown up or something, and he's like, "You gonna give me a hand up?" And you see his silhouette, and you see him cl- bring out his claws, and then you watch him go in to stab uh, Deadpool. No, and you just get a quick up. frame, and then it just cuts off. It's super cool. I'm so excited for this movie. I'm so excited to see Hugh Jackman play Wolverine again. It's going to be great. We need, we so need more baby legs. Oh, yeah. I like that. <laughs> it's because, like, when Deadpool gets his limbs cut off or whatever. No, no, so Juggernaut ripped him in half. Yes, when Juggernaut ripped him in half. Yeah, that's all I want to say on the Deadpool 3, or Deadpool and Wolverine is, is what it's called. I like and is that. Is that the only Marvel movie we're getting this year? That's the only Marvel movie. Woo! But speaking of more Marvel news... <laughs> <laughs> we just, today, got a trailer. <laughs> you could just press the button. Right? You can't. Yeah, you can. Jesus. Oh, See? never mind, sorry. So, today, we just got a trailer for X-Men 97. Which oh, yeah. is a continuation of the X Men animated series, which is why I started watching it again. And it's the X Men animated series itself is pretty good. The animation, not the greatest, it, but I don't think they had as great a budget as like the Batman animated series. You compare it to that, oh my freaking god! Batman animated series visually is amazing. This it's pretty good, <clears throat> but it's very campy, and that's fine. But it's fun, and but the ninety seven tra- or X Men ninety seven trailer looks. I'm excited. It's got a, like, mix between 2D CG blend. I think it's going to be a good visual style. Um, and it comes out in March, March 20th, so it's soon. Because DC had just basically Batman was just their only animated series. No, really? no, no, no. They had Batman animated series. They had Superman. They did a Justice League. They did Electric or Static Shock. But I think Marvel had more long-running ones. Yeah, kind of. Well... DC's kind of because Teen Titans which is like 2000s but yeah, if we go back to the 90s good. Marvel had at this time X-Men the animated series Spider-Man and not like the original one Iron Man there was an Iron Man um the Silver Surfer there, one too yeah it wasn't I don't know if it was from the 90s or not Duh, I don't know what it would be it would be the yeah Silver Surfer and then it would have Modoc and Iron Man. The, oh, are you thinking of figures? the? Uh, you're thinking of this like, like really like cartoonish. No, that's not figures. from the '90s. That's like, from more of our 2000s, childhood, like yeah. 2000s. I don't know if it was like rolled over from the '90s or not. So I can't remember what it's called, but no, I don't think so. But yeah, um, X Men '97 looks good. That is a Marvel show, so I guess we're in, Deadpool's not the only thing we're getting MCU wise. Well, actually, because I don't, I don't think. Yeah, I was like, I don't think it's MCU. Yeah, it's not MCU. Now that I think about it, because actually they started the trailer out with Marvel Animation, so I think. Yeah. We're getting kind of another thing because we are getting Spider Man freshman year, which is a animated show. So we're getting our own Marvel animation line. It looks like, but yeah, that's enough about Marvel. Sadly, <laughs> sadly. <laughs> well, I mean, this was a little bit of a shorter episode, but I do have to be up at like six tomorrow because I <laughs> think at seven, seven fit thirty. Unless there's anything else you guys have to see. Other than your recommendation. Arc 2 of One Piece, let's go. Oh, yeah. No. <laughs> How long is that going to take? We didn't even finish Arc 1. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I'll do it quick. Wait, okay. Arc 1. <laughs> <laughs> Spoilers for One Piece. So, I'm pretty sure we left off with um, Usopp joining the Starlight Pirates and them getting the Going Mary, which is our famous ship. Um, after this point, we go to um, the Baratier, which is where we meet the best character in One Piece, Sanji. Vince more Sanji. <laughs> Tyler's shaking his head no. It's because we, we, uh, we haven't actually. met the best character yet. Yeah, I'd say so. Never mind. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> yeah, you're going to do that. 
Um, but Sanji, I love him. He's my favorite One Piece character. Anyways, here we get to meet. Um, we also are introduced to uh, Dracula, and Mih- Dracula and Mihawk, however you say his name. Um, and also Captain Zeff, who. What happens is one of um I think it's Zeph. No, that yeah. well that's the, the that's the chef. I'm thinking of the pirate Don Krieg. So one of Don Krieg's pirates, and he was supposed to be a famous pirate in the East Blue, um shows up on the Baratier, which is like a traveling restaurant, and he's like, "I'm starving." Our sh- we entered the Grand Line and we got immediately decimated, and it was from and they're like it was from this dude named Dracula Mihawk. And all the whole reason he uh, killed us or like destroyed our ship and whatever is because we woke him up from his nap. So it kind of sets this thing with the Grand Line that this is going to be intimidating as frick. But anyways, Sanji's like Sanji's whole thing is like he'll well, they, never. They wanted to use the the restaurant as the ship back to the Grand Line. That's a little later. I'm talking about how like Jin is the uh, the the man from Don Creek's crew. Yeah came there and he's yeah. like I'm starving Sanji's whole thing is that he'll never let a um starving man well a man starve he will always feed somebody and that's because we find out in his past that him and Captain Zeph who runs the uh Bariate, both got in, like a pirate wreck or a, a shipwreck and um they got stranded on an island with only so much food and there were two things Captain Zeph had one and Sanji had the other and Captain Zeph had more because he's older or whatever, and Sanji had less, and they both had a ration. And we find out Sanji like, gets through all his food because it's been like a month or something. And he's like, I'm going to go kill the old man and eat him or something like that, or he's going to go steal his food. Yeah, I'm going to go see how much He goes there. over there and sees that it, his sack of food was literally just all treasure. And he looks, and he's like, how did you survive? And you see down on his leg that he, he cut off his own leg to eat. So it's a really um, powerful moment. But, you know, it's kind of sets Sanji's backstory, even though we get another backstory later on. But, um, back to the present, Sanji feeds him whatever, and he's grateful. But then he brings Don Krieg over, and Dog Krieg kind of takes over the ship or whatever. And they start fighting with Luffy and the gang. And as they're fighting, we meet Dracula Mihawk, who is the greatest swordsman of the world. And that's who Zoro has been wanting to kill. He's wanted to become the greatest swordsman. To do that, he'd obviously have to kill Mihawk. So they duel. Zoro's nowhere, nowhere near strong enough. And through their battle, you see that. And But since Zoro was like such an honorable swordsman, and right when Mihawk was about to like do the finishing blow, he turned around, and he's like uh, slashes on a swordsman's back, or like... The, um, the swordsman's greatest shame. A slash on the back is the swordsman's greatest shame. And at that point, like, Mihawk's like, don't die yet, you know. And Mihawk um, uses, like, a butter knife. Yes, Mihawk uses his, like, fucking <laughs> necklace knife. But, and we get another powerful moment of, like, Zoro vowing to Luffy to never lose again until he becomes the greatest pirate, or the, the greatest swordsman. And after that, Mihawk leaves, Luffy beats Don Krieg. And throughout this all, Nami... Um, takes the going Mary and um, steals all the treasure and leaves them um, and goes back to her home island <laughs> Fuck. yeah Arlong Park well yes but that's not the name of the whole actual like it practically becomes Arlong Park this is where hey Tyler's cheating it's supposed to be from memory dude <laughs> we didn't say that yes we did um. Anyways, I can't remember her hometown, but yeah, it's practically oh, yeah, comes that, Arlong Park. Yeah, I don't remember. Really so this is where we learn what the fish like. There are fishmen, and they're like a superior class or superior race. Oh yeah. God, that's. <laughs> There's, see, One Piece goes into a lot of... People think One Piece is like just this pirate show, but there's a lot of stuff about, like, racism, slavery, corrupt governments. It's There's a lot more to it, and this is kind of one of the things. We learn that these fishmen are super strong people, and we learn that the Arlong pirates are, like, very ruthless, and they are the strongest in the East Blue. They are the strongest things, um, but pretty much the government's paying them off to stay in this area... Or no, 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 no. Arlong is paying the government to leave them alone in this area. Um, he's you paying tribute, so they'll just let him be. But he took over this island where Nami lives, 
and he, um, every like month they'll go over to the town and they'll collect the tribute and if they don't have it they'll kill them um I'm gonna make a long excuse me long story <laughs> short cause I don't really wanna get out of here um pretty much Nami made a deal with Arlong for like a hundred million berry which is the currency berry is currency in one piece that if she got that much she, uh, Arlong would free her village um and she got it but Arlong caught on to it and had the government confiscate it confiscate it con- confiscate. Con- confiscate it it's another political case for me mm-hmm. <laughs> but she t- uh, it gets conf- nope the government takes it <laughs> the government takes it away and at this point, like, all hope is lost for Nami. She can't do it again. And this is where Luffy and the gang come in. She's like, I don't want you guys here. Leave. And Luffy's like, I know. And he just kind of stands there. And eventually Nami's like, Luffy, help me. And Luffy's like, oh, fuck yeah. Goes in, kicks Arlong's ass. Awesome fights. Um, Arlong's beaten. And the crew sets sail to Logetown. And I'll stop there. And don't... Watch One Piece or read it, because this is a terrible retelling of it. I'm just trying to hit, like... I started the, the first biggest. episode. I have, like, ten minutes left. The anime? Yeah. No, of the... Why action? That. I could not tell you what's going on. That's probably because you're on your phone. <laughs> uh, pass. No, it's a great show, and I'm going to keep saying that, because I'm a One Piece fucking... I'm a One Piece simp. But it's great. I love it. Well, okay. thus concludes... Guys, we're on episode four. Yeah. That means that it's been four weeks since school started. Yeah, so that's actually crazy. <laughs> How do you feel about episode four, Tyler? Was this successful? Yeah. Yeah? Not a lot to say, but we were concise. Yeah, we apologize for the shortness of this episode, but it's been a busy week these past yeah. couple of weeks, so it's hard. That's why I Excuse retold me. the show. Yeah, and I mean, also the movies that are coming out. Oh, I wanted to ask greatest. you about that before we leave. Madam Web apparently is it's apparently supposed terrible. to be worse than Morbius. Which is, it can't be because Sydney Sweet told us to go see it twice. But guess what? Guess what? Written by the same people who made Morbius. So it's going to be a Morbin to good time. <laughs> I really do want to cover that on the show. We got to watch it. Morbius? No. Madam Web. Yeah. I still intend to see it. I think I'm I saw so Morbius. Sad. I don't remember. I saw it. It was. I did. I, I don't know. Like five out of ten. I don't know if I watched Morbius or Venom, but it was one of the two. Um, I still want to see Madam Web eventually. I think it's probably going to be bad. <laughs> from what I've heard and what I see everywhere. But I'm a Spider-Man simp, so I'll watch it and see what I... There is. There's rumors of Tobey Maguire being in, like, the post credit scene. That might make it so I'll cut that feasible. out because that's spoiler. It's a rumor. You do you. <laughs> well, all right. And my recommendation for next episode... Tyler, do you have HBO Max? He oh. has it. He has it. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, my recommendation for next episode is Casablanca. It's a 1942 romance movie with Valentine's Day was just here. Yes, you're going to watch it, Tyler. It's what? It's probably the best movie ever made. How long is it? Like an hour and a half. Oh, beautiful. Too long. <laughs> Invitation game was like two hours. much shorter. <laughs> yeah, but you just said romance movie. Okay, it's a war movie, too. Ah, it is a war movie. War movie yeah, it takes place during World War Two. No, no mathematicians. Oh. Yes, yes, there, mathematicians. A bar <laughs> yes, mathematicians. Yes, mathematicians. Yes, mathematicians. Yes, oh, okay. mathematicians. Okay. It's a mathematician who also owns a bar. <laughs> get my out. <laughs> yeah, I've been meaning to watch this all. Yeah. This will definitely get me One, It's maybe my favorite movie. So we're going to watch that before next episode, which for us is next Thursday, and for you is next Monday. That's a good outro, isn't it? I just thought of that (laughs) (laughs) okay everybody have a nice best picture day as we said in the first episode oh yeah full circle anything to say tyler nope anything stupid i don't say stupid (laughs) stuff we discuss this everything he says is no (laughs) um you don't have g fuel what were you drinking uh pineapple mango lemonade from wendy's (laughs) is it pretty good Mm -hmm. say it Say what? Pineapple mango lemonade. I just did say that. <laughs> say it all. Pineapple mango. Pineapple mango smooth uh, lemonade from Wendy's is good. Pretty good or good? Good. So it's better than candy corn G fuel. Yes. <sighs> but candy corn G fuel is like 
I don't put it at the top, but I don't put it at the bottom. <laughs> Tyler's trying to steal one of Nate's farm bites. Oh, any last words, Nate? Um, thanks for bearing with us. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, we have seventy-four listeners. Oh, cool. Seventy-four people are listening to this. Probably, probably like five people are gonna listen to this episode. But Russ is on it there, so. Yeah, I feel like we're gonna some. People I feel are, like people are gonna see. People are gonna. To people are gonna Russ. leave after Russ. I feel like. Yeah, I feel like they're gonna joke about like. I feel like stuff's gonna go on Yik Yak. Maybe like Russ Crawford likes anime. <laughs> <laughs> I just gonna be funny. Um, yeah. So. Uh, doesn't feel like it's the end, but you know, folks. Um, we'll catch you in the next one. <laughs> <laughs> Say, end us off, Tyler. That's all, folks. <laughs>